This is a video on using the first and second derivative uh, to sketch functions. And they're giving us an example here uh, where they're asking us to sketch a function that has the following properties. And we have f prime of negative 3 equals 0, f double prime of negative 3 is less than 0, f of negative 3 equals 4, uh, f prime of 4 equals 0, f double prime of 4 is greater than 0, f of 4 equals negative 5, and then we have f double prime of 2 equals 0 and f of 2 equals 1. So when you're sketching functions and using the first and second derivatives, uh, the first thing you want to do is try to use uh, the first derivative to find critical values, right? So the first thing I'm going to do here is, you know, for my solution is, you know, we're going to look for our critical values. CV will be abbreviation for critical values. And these occur typically when, you know, the first derivative is either equal to zero or the first derivative does not exist or is undefined. Well, in this case, they told us, right, so if I'm looking for f prime of x equals a 0, because they didn't tell us anything about where it's undefined, well, where does that occur? Well, f prime of x equals a 0 at, well, when f prime of negative 3 equals 0, so this occurs at x equals negative 3, and at x equals, well, f prime of 4 equals 0, so at 4. So occurs at x equals negative 3 and x equals 4. So these are going to be the critical values we're going to use. And then once you have those, typically what we do is we either use the first derivative test or the second derivative test to determine if these are relative maxes or relative minimums. Uh, in the case that we have here, uh, you can't really use the first derivative test because the first derivative test would be creating a number line for the first derivative and then determining what happens to the first derivative on the left and right of each of those uh, critical values we have in terms of it being positive or negative. Since they didn't give us any more information about the first derivative, we can't really use first derivative test here. Um, the second derivative test, though, uh, we can use because the second derivative test says, you know, you want to take these critical values and you want to substitute them into the second derivative and determine where it's positive or negative. And that'll tell you if you have a minimum or a maximum depending on, on the requirements of the test. So I'll use SDT for second derivative test here and for second derivative test. Right? You want to substitute in your critical values into the second derivative, which they told us some information about. Right, If I have f double prime of negative 3 and it's less than 0, right? so I don't know what the function f of x is, but I know that the second derivative evaluated at that critical value of negative 3 is less than 0. The thing I care about here is that it's negative. Right? Less than 0 means negative. So if the second derivative is negative, that would tell you that your graph is concave how? Well, it's concave down. If it's concave down, what does it tell you about that point there? Well, this point here needs to be a relative max. All right, so we know we have a relative max at x equals negative 3. And that's because, you know, the first derivative told us the slope there is 0. The second derivative tells you that if it's concave up uh, or concave down. Since it's negative, it's concave down, so that means that that point where it goes flat has to be a maximum. We also have f double prime of 4. f double prime of 4, they told us, is greater than 0. That's positive, and that's what I really care about, right? The second term being positive tells me my graph there would be concave up. If I'm concave, down, uh, concave up, tell me about what that point is. Well, that point there would be a low point or a relative min at x equals 4. And now typically what we do is we find the corresponding y value to find the actual value of the relative max and relative min. Which means we would take our critical value that we just had, in this case negative 3 and 4, and we sub them into the original function. Now I don't know what the original function is, but they gave us information about what happens when you substitute them in. So what we know is that f of negative 3 equals 4. That's the point negative 3, 4. And we know that that 4 is a relative max, right? We just found that. And here the point would be x value of 4, function value of 4, subbing it in gives you negative 5. So we have the point 4, negative 5, and this would be a relative min. All right, and we have that because we just determined it was a minimum there. So once we have that, uh, we can also talk about inflection points. Now, typically when we find inflection points, what we do is we take the second derivative and you find where it's equal to zero or does not exist. So for here, we were given that f double prime of two equals zero. 
So a potential inflection point could occur there. Um, the way you determine if the inflection point does occur there is that you would normally have a number line um, that you would put the value on for F double prime. All right, so this is for our inflection point now. All right, so this is us testing it out. So for our inflection point here, usually for F double prime, you'll put the X value on there where it's equal to zero, and you want to check to see what happens to the left and right in F double prime. Well, F double prime and negative three, we already know was less than zero, so I know it's negative on the left side, and F double prime of four is greater than zero, so I know it's positive on the right side, so the concavity does change there. All right, because this goes from the original function f would be concave down because you know the second derivative is negative, and here the original function f would be concave up because the second derivative is positive. So since concavity changed, I know that we have an inflection point at x equals two. What's the y value? Well, we know that f of two equals one from up above here. So, 2, 1, right? Because we know f of 2 equals 1. That was given to us above. So, we have the point uh, 2, comma 1, and we know that'll be the inflection point on our graph. Now, since they didn't give us any more information, we just have to make sure that the information that they gave us is present in our sketch. So, I'm going to sketch this down here below. It's a sketch. There's more than one graph that could look like this. As long as you had the correct properties, you would get credit for it. Um, but we've got to make sure that we do have the properties present. So oh, we got an x and y axis. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we'll assume those are all one apart. And I'll plot the points I know. So the points I know, uh, we've got this inflection point at 2, 1. Maybe I'll just plot that right now so I have it. All right, so that's, we know, an inflection point at... 2, 1. We also have a relative max at negative 3, 4, and a relative min at 4, negative 5. So at negative 3, 1, 2, 3, and then up 1, 2, 3, 4. This is our relative max that we referred to above. So this is the relative max at negative 3, 4. We have a relative min, so that 4, negative 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and then negative 5 would be down here. So this is a relative min at 4, negative 5. And then from there, you could sketch the graph through this. You should know what happens. We know we're concave down until we get to our inflection point. Relative max tells you that you have to go up and then back down, right? And that's it. There's no other relative extreme on this side. So you're going to go up and then come back down. And that whole time you're going to be concave down. That's what our second derivative number line tells us. And then once you hit the inflection point, you become concave up and you're going to be going downward, right, until you get to the min, and then you're going to go back up. So look something like this. Make sure that, you know, we're keeping the properties we talked about. So this is our relative max. So it's our high point there. And we're going to hit the inflection point, and then we're going to turn around and come concave up, hit the minimum, come back up, arrows on the end. You know, this will vary, just making sure you have the max and the min where they need to be. Um, and you could answer some questions about the graph here. You could say, where is this decreasing? Um, where is the function increasing? Right? So it's, you know, decreasing between x equals negative 3 uh, all the way down till uh, x equals 4, right? This whole way it's decreasing after it hits the max. Where is it increasing? Well, it's increasing from negative infinity up until negative 3, and it's increasing uh, from 4 to infinity. So you can grab that information from there as well. Uh, like I said, there will be a variety of graphs that can meet this criteria, depending on how high up or how low you bring this, how steep you bring that through. Um, but the properties need to be there. And then this would be the graph of the function that they're calling f of x. We don't know what that function is, but... Um, we do have the properties present.